welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few weeks ago, we looked at Ubuntu 2404, the latest version of the popular Linux distro. However, with Ubuntu, things don't end there, as 10 official additional flavors of Ubuntu 2404 have also been released. These are developed by the wider Ubuntu community, and come with different desktops or pre-installed applications. However, they're all still backed by the full Ubuntu archive for packages and updates. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, I thought we'd look at the distros in the alphabetic order they're listed on the Ubuntu Flavors website, which means the first one we come to is at Ubuntu, which is what we're uh, running here, and which, as the name suggests, has been created for education. And what we have here is a distro with the same interface, the same GNOME desktop as regular Ubuntu, with the flavour being distinguished purely by its pre-installed software. So, if we click to see all applications, certain things added here are fairly standard programs. For example, under the art folder here, we've got things like GIMP, Inkscape, LibreCAD, TuxPaint, etc. But other things here are more directly educational. For example, we've got the Marble Atlas, and uh, under Science, we have got Calcium, which brings us up a fantastic periodic table where we can click on an element, find out about it, see its uh, atomic model, its spectrum, extra information, etc. This is a great piece of software if you're into learning about chemistry. And uh, if we click on Technology, I'm very pleased to see we've got a basic interpreter. We can try learning some basic programming language. With a very simple little test program there. There it is, and if we run it like that, there's the output. We can learn all about BASIC here in Edubuntu. And uh, something else I really like is a G-Compress. I'm going to run this up. This is for children aged between 2 and 10 years old, and it provides all kinds of uh, educational activities, which we can see at the top, all sitting there waiting to be uh, experimented with. Looks very exciting, doesn't it? I really like uh, this piece of software. And so what we basically have here with Edubuntu is regular Ubuntu with education and related applications added. And I think this is a very good thing, as it means those who use Edubuntu will be introduced to a regular mainstream Linux distro at an early age. Next, let's move on to the first Ubuntu flavour to provide us with a desktop experience that's more familiar for Windows users, as Kubuntu marries Ubuntu with KDE's beautiful Plasma desktop. Specifically, Kubuntu 2404 runs Plasma 5.27, and sadly not the latest Plasma 6, as I reviewed recently on the channel, and which I'm sure will feature in a future version. Installed software is the standard kind of end-user desktop fare. We get a full version of uh, the LibreOffice suite. Under Internet, we get Firefox, a Thunderbird email client, and various other useful tools. And in a full install, under Graphics, we have the Critter Painting program and a few games, which aren't now included in a standard version of Ubuntu. Because we're running KDE Plasma, the desktop environment is highly configurable in a way it absolutely isn't out of the box in regular Ubuntu. And as we can see here, we can pick a global theme, we can pick an application style, a Plasma style, we can set colors, window decorations, we can set custom fonts that I've done here, and select our icons, cursors, etc. This really is a desktop environment entirely under user control. This said, as we'll shortly see, Kubuntu is far from the only Ubuntu flavour to provide this type of functionality. Like all other flavours on test, performance here is very good, the system is nice and responsive, even though we're running on fairly minimal test hardware. Specifically, our test hardware is a Radsat X2L with a J4125 processor and 4GB of RAM. And certainly all of the distros here perform better on this hardware than Windows 10 or Windows 11. Moving on, our next official flavour is Lubuntu, which uses the lightweight, no-frills LXQT desktop. So, if you want something straightforward that's visually akin to uh, older versions of Windows, then Lubuntu may well be the distro for you. 
If we look down the included applications, all the things we would expect to be here for day-to-day -day desktop computing are present. Plus we've got Critter in the full install for digital painting. Over in internet, we've got the same things we saw in Kubuntu. We've got a full version of LibreOffice, etc. And talking of applications, it's interesting to note that if you do a minimal install of Lubuntu, nothing will be included that uses canonical snap package format, which may make some people very happy, and I think makes Lubuntu unique amongst official Ubuntu flavors. Turning away from the whole snap debate, Lubuntu's LXQT desktop does offer a reasonable level of a customization if we look in a LXQT settings and appearance. We can't control as much as we just saw in a KDE's Plasma, but we've got more control than in traditional Ubuntu. And indeed, overall, Lubuntu is a very nice distro, especially for lower end hardware. And indeed, in this context, I'd note that Lubuntu is the smallest official flavor to download with its ISO file being just 3.3 gigabytes. Guess what? We've got another distro, and this time it's Ubuntu Budgie, which is an official flavor that uses a desktop called Budgie. So only four distros in, we've already had three desktop environments, and there are several more to go. Anyway, this is the Budgie desktop, and as we can see, by default we have at the top the panel, what we call the taskbar in Windows. At the bottom we have a little dock to allow us to access frequently used things, favorite things, like that. And then top right, we have the usual types of controls for things like logging out, closing down the system. We've got the notifications there. We've got the volume control, but we've also got things like this, which is quick notes for writing quick notes. And we've also got access to recently used places. And then top left, we have, well, initially if we click top left on the little budgie, we get this which is a bit like all applications in the regular GNOME desktop we see in regular Ubuntu. But if we want, we can click here and turn this into what I would call a normal menu, which I think is much easier to use, allows us to very easily see we've got standard kind of software on this system. And I just like this. That's a very nice touch being able to flick between a traditional menu and a non-traditional type of icon view. And indeed, this whole desktop's got a very nice feel to it. If we go down to uh, here, I've opened up the Budgie welcome screen. If we go here to makeovers and layouts, you can see that we've got all kinds of customization. We can change the appearance of uh, the Budgie desktop like this, as we can see. And we can also change the layouts. So for example, here we're using the current Ubuntu Budgie, but we could change, for example, to classic Ubuntu Budgie. Let's try applying that. Has that worked? Things seem to have altered. If we now uh, click up the top, doesn't seem very different. Oh, if we haven't got the little control there to go back the other way, have we? So we've gone back to something slightly different. Anyway, Ubuntu Budgie, it's a nice distro. As you can probably tell, I've not used this before, but I certainly wish to use it a bit more. So I think we'll be returning to Ubuntu Budgie fairly soon on this channel. Now, just when you thought it couldn't get any more exciting, we're going to turn the dial to 11, as we've arrived in Ubuntu Cinnamon. This is one of the more recent official Ubuntu flavors and uses the Cinnamon desktop found by default in Linux Mint. As some of you will know, Cinnamon is my own personal favorite desktop, as whilst it's not as flashy as some of the others, it offers loads of customization just where you need it, and is excellent for just getting the job done. So, for me, in theory at least, Ubuntu plus Cinnamon is an ideal combination. This said, in some ways, it's kind of strange to be running a distro that feels just like Linux Mint, but it's actually Ubuntu. And yes, I do know that under the surface Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. And I guess in practical terms, one of the big differences is that Ubuntu Cinnamon uses snaps in its package installer, and Linux Mint doesn't. When it comes to applications that are pre-installed, it's also good to see that here under graphics we have GIMP pre-installed, I always like to see that, and under games we have both chess and solitaire, so we're all set for a fun time. And there's also no surprises in terms of the other pre-installed software, and it'll be very interesting to see just how many Linux Mint users decide to jump ship to Ubuntu Cinnamon.
Next, we're going to make friends with Ubuntu Kylin 2404, which is an official Ubuntu flavor optimized for Chinese users, although it also supports English and other languages. The distro has its own default desktop called UKUI, or the Universal Kylin User Interface, which is based on the Mate desktop that we'll be looking at in the next segment of this video. And as I do like Mate, it's no surprise that I'm impressed with the Universal Kylin User Interface, which is now in version 4.0. On the software side, we have some pretty typical desktop applications. There really are no surprises here. Although if we look down to the system tools, we do see some of the origins with the Amate desktop and also the fact we have some dedicated Kylin software. And this includes the file manager, which is called Peony. Here's the Peony file manager. Hello, Peony file manager. It's uh, very nice. And then we also look down here again. We also have something called Kylin Assistant. Where has it gone? There it is. And I thought this might be very exciting indeed. And in fact, it's not very exciting indeed. It's a useful utility for uh, cleaning things up and uh, managing the system, getting information, etc. And it also provides access to the Kylin Software Center, which of course we can use to install applications. And so what we have here is not just an Ubuntu flavor with an interface optimized for Chinese users, but also some dedicated programs as well as some very stylish desktop backgrounds. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Ubuntu Mate 2404. And yes, the developers tell us that it's pronounced Mate in common with the South American drink. Personally, I first ran Ubuntu Mate on a classic Odroid XU4 back in 2017 and this distro has always provided excellent support for single board computers. Like several other official Ubuntu flavors, it's distinguished by its desktop environment, which is called Mate, and which I've always found to be very calm and friendly and, and reassuring for reasons I've never quite been able to fathom, but I always let out a gentle contented sigh when I boot up this distro. Turning to the specifics, we have two panels as you can see, one at the top and want the bottom. The one at the bottom just things like allowing us to access different workspaces, as we can see. Let's go back to uh, the first workspace. And we've also got the trash can here on the bottom panel. Always very exciting to see that. And then on the top panel, we have the usual kind of stuff. On the right, we've got the uh, closed down kind of stuff, the volume control, notifications, network connections, as we can see. And then on the left, we have a traditional menu with our applications. And there's not quite as much installed by default here in Ubuntu Mate. We do have the full version of LibreOffice, but other things are really down to the basics that we need. And customization here is pretty good. It currently tells us we're running a custom theme. We aren't really, I've just changed a few font settings over in font so we can see things more clearly on video. And it's always good to see in any distro when you can change individual font elements, well, individually, as we can't, for example, in the default GNOME desktop in regular Ubuntu. And so there we are, Ubuntu Mate, a very nice, very friendly Ubuntu flavor that I always very positively recommend. Now, a few weeks ago in the comments on this channel, somebody asked, is there a Linux distro that you can just install and then get on with using without having to do anything else? And if what you want to do in Linux is creative work, then this is exactly what Ubuntu Studio sets out to do. Because this is not an Ubuntu flavor defined by its desktop, rather it's a content creation distro for audio, graphics, photography, and video. Now, of course, it has to have a desktop and Ubuntu Studio currently uses KDE Plasma, specifically here in 2404 KDE Plasma 5.27, just like we saw back in Kubuntu. So Ubuntu Studio does look lovely and is highly configurable, in addition to having loads of great free creative software pre-installed. Now, I have reviewed this distro a couple of times in the past, so I'll link to those videos in the video description, but just to give you a quick overview of what's here, and there is so much. Under audio, we've got loads and loads and loads of pre-installed applications, loads of good utilities. We've got lots of stuff for working with instruments, with MIDI, 
We've got the Ardo Digital Audio Workstation. We've got Audacity for working with waveforms. We've got the Hydrogen Drum Machine. I mustn't boot that up or we'd be here forever, but there's loads and loads of audio stuff here, as you can see. We've also got lots under graphic design. Again, various utilities. Under photography here, we've got things like Darktable. We've got Blender. We've got GIMP for photo editing. We've got Inkscape for doing structured graphics. Critter for painting, my paint for painting, etc. And then under video production, we've got Blender again for doing 3D work, compositing work, that type of thing. We've got the Caden Live Video Editor, OBS Studio for screen recording and streaming. There really is so much pre installed here in Ubuntu Studio. And the fact you can download a distro with all of these things pre installed and just get on with using them is to me absolutely amazing. For me, Ubuntu Studio is a fantastic showcase for free and open source software and for what Linux has now become. Greetings! Here we are with our penultimate flavour, which is Ubuntu Unity 2404. Once again, this is a distro defined by its desktop, which here is called Unity 7. And this is an interesting desktop as it was first developed by Canonical, the publishers of Ubuntu, and used as the main Ubuntu desktop between 2010 and 2017. Over on its website, the Unity desktop describes itself in various ways, and one of the things it says down here is that the Unity desktop environment is like the Batman on desktop environments, sleek, powerful, and always ready to save the day. And whilst I'm not sure the last part of his statement is entirely correct, I thought it was a bold enough claim to be included in this video. Now, at first glance, Ubuntu Unity is another very stylish flavour of Ubuntu. However, in use, I'm less impressed with this than the other flavours we've been looking at. If we click top left, we get search functionality, where I could type, for example, Libra and bring up all the parts of LibreOffice. Or we can look at all applications on the system like this and the scroll down, there they all are. Although I prefer the format we get in regular Ubuntu, and I even more prefer, as you probably gather by now, a traditional menu. And it's also worth noting that here we don't have a great deal of customization. If we go to settings and appearance, there really is not a lot we can do. And in fact, it even says to us for more theme customization, use the Unity Tweak tool. And so, for example, you might have noticed here, I've got a very small mouse pointer. I like a much larger mouse pointer, both in the real world and when trying to show things on video. And I can't find a way to do that here. And that's a little sad to me. And so, whilst I'm sure some people really like the Unity desktop and they like this flavour of Ubuntu, it's not one I personally plan to return to in the future. Greetings! So far, we've seen Ubuntu 2404 paired up with seven different alternative desktops. KDE Plasma, LXQT, Budgie, Cinnamon, UKUI, Mate, and Unity. But this may leave some of you thinking, what about the XFCE desktop? And in answer, here we are with our final official flavour, XUbuntu, which marries Ubuntu with the popular XFCE desktop. As you may know, XFCE has a reputation for being resource efficient, stable, and fairly configurable. And whilst the relative resources used by different desktops are less than they used to be, XFCE is still a decent choice if you want a lightweight desktop that stays out of the way and just lets you get on with using your computer. This said, personally, I think that Ubuntu, with its LXQT desktop, is a better option than the XFCE implementation we find here in XUbuntu, which, to my eyes at least, is a little visually stark. And I also struggle with the, the menu layout here, which places categories on the right, and then the applications within them on the left, although it is good to see GIMP is pre-installed. And it's also good to see that when we get to settings, we find what we'd expect to see in XFCE. We click on appearance here. We can do more than we could in Ubuntu Unity and more than we could in regular Ubuntu. And so overall, this is a nice, safe, official Ubuntu flavor, particularly as with Lubuntu to run on less powerful hardware. And XUbuntu also gets a special prize for being the final distro on our list.
The official flavors make it easy for people who want to use Ubuntu, but with an alternative desktop or pre-installed educational or creative applications. But what's your favorite flavor? Do let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.